This is the Lifestyle Builders Podcast, Show 77, Speed Bumps, Pivots, and Trip Jars with Melissa and Paul Pruitt. Because I only went to grow so big so that I didn't have to be responsible for other people. Mm -hmm. And then so when Melissa came into my life, you know, I realized like, oh, my workaholism was still there. Like I'm working seven days a week, 24 hours a day to, to fill voids. And then when she it wasn't going to be healthy to have a, a mature relationship. So when she came in, she introduced me to boundaries. And, <laughs> and uh, also that also came along with me trusting again, mm -hmm. which, was, which, was, which was a challenge. Hi, Ariana here with a quick PSA about why this topic is so important to us. Tom and I know how challenging it can be to start and run a business, to take care of your loved ones, and on top of it all, to keep a healthy relationship with your spouse. It isn't easy, and that is why we created our Lifestyle Builders Mentorship Program. As a special offer during this very special Couples and Entrepreneurship Month, we'd like to invite you to get started with your first month of Lifestyle Builders for only $1. So if you, and your spouse is welcome too, need more strategy, support and guidance in your business and life, plus people who truly care about you and will keep you accountable, sign up now at tomandariana.com slash lbcouples with the code lbcouples. All right, you guys, a little bit more about our special couple on today. Paul and Melissa Pruitt are professional photographers with a specialty in personal and professional branding. With their extensive background in business and marketing, they bring their expertise to their clients. In addition, they provide support, mentoring, and speak nationally on small business solutions. Paul is an expert business and marketing coach with national speaking experience and a published writer with entrepreneur.com. Melissa is a two-time published author, including Amazon best-selling book, Profitographers, co written with Paul, a TEDx speaker, and a contributor for the Huffington Post. They have a love for travel and helping others grow personally and professionally. All right, so we had a great conversation with Melissa and Paul, and I think one of the things that I loved the most was just how open they were uh, and how honest they were about how working together did not look pretty right when it started off, you know, because it's very common to have that want to show people like, oh, it's great. We love working together and everything went so well. And we used the analogy of like a car going over a speed bump. And Paul basically was like, yeah, no, we didn't even have the car in park, right? <laughs> or something. And it was like the car went, whoop. Well, and, and, you know, the, the coolest thing too, I think with them is they both had lives before each other. Uh, that sounds weird, but <laughs> everyone has lives before each other. But so Paul had a business and they had different stuff going on. Some of that didn't work out. And then they got together, I'd say a little bit later than a lot of the couples we've talked to have. And so they had, you know, like just different dynamics and experiences. And we talked a little bit about even just trust and how when things haven't worked out in the past, how you let somebody else in. And mm -hmm. we went through that. So it was so cool to dive into some of that and see how they not only work past it, but are really like building the lives that they want and letting all of those things be lessons learned on the journey. Yeah. And I think having that non-traditional uh, relationship dynamic, like you said, you know, he already had his business established and then Melissa came in and he had to figure out how to, you know, kind of let go a little bit and allow her to do what she was supposed to be doing and to trust her to do that. Yeah. And then, you know, he had a, his son from his previous marriage where, mm -hmm. you know, Melissa was coming in, they called her the bonus mom, which was, was the awesome. best thing ever. <laughs> um, but you know, they had to kind of figure out some of the boundaries and, and negotiations and things that they were doing because now they're co-parenting with another couple and they're entrepreneurs and you know just all of these little complexities and things that can very easily throw off your your life and your family and just some of the ways that they navigated that I think were just really insightful. Yeah. And so I think very inspirational across the board, but especially if you've got maybe a little bit of a different background and you're like, I don't know how to pull this all together. Like this interview is going to be great for you guys. Mm -hmm. And with that, we'll let you enjoy. All right, everyone, we are back again with another couple for our Couples and Entrepreneurship Series. Today, we've got Paul and Melissa Pruitt on. Hey, you guys, how you doing? Hey, how's Hi. it going? It's great to see you guys. Good. It's good yeah, to see you, you too. too. We see these guys occasionally at conferences throughout the year, which is very nice when we get to run into them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I didn't know you were going to be here. <laughs> We need to coordinate that. <laughs> I know. We should no, we it. also need to coordinate Ariana's dress code because apparently she didn't get the memo that we're all. I got it. I got it. <laughs> but you know, I just had to be the outlier. 
yeah. with, with what we have in the background. background. We've got yeah. some blues We're good. in here. So. <laughs> there we go. All right. I still match. You know what? Couples in relationship, and we can't even get on the same page with our dress code. <laughs> Not a good sign. Very funny. <laughs> this guy who takes funny pictures when we do match and posts them on social media, like, hey, hey, we got up and didn't realize we were matching today. That's great. That's great. <laughs> but anyways. Anyways. So you guys have been working together for how long now? My gosh. Um, I've been in the business, what, for like, it's been three years now? Yeah. About three years yeah. now. So um, we both had separate business backgrounds. And when we first, you know, started seeing each other, it was one of those things where um, I was doing a lot of different things. Paul was doing a lot of different things. And when we came into the household together, we're like, listen, like, why don't we just combine all of our superpowers, put it into one thing. And um, that's kind of how it evolved from there. I love that. It's combined all the superpowers. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. What did that look like, though? Because I know oftentimes when we are in a relationship with somebody, you see all of those things like, oh, these, this is going to work out great together. We, we kind of fill each other's gaps and you're good at this and I'm good at this and we're just going to put it together and it's going to work. What did it look like when you kind of hit your first speed bump where, okay, things aren't working like we expected? What was that for you guys? Because I know we've had a couple throughout our working, our business Our speed career. bumps were like mountains. <laughs> They're more <Wait>. like mounds. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I equate it more to like, you know, you get in the car and you think you put it in drive to hit that speed bump and you actually, oh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't put it in the gear properly. Um, I, I already had a pretty successful photography business uh, centered around, a lot, a lot of different niches, and we've narrowed that down over the last few years. And when Melissa came in and her strengths and everything, the, the challenge, I think, the biggest thing on my end was to allow myself to let go mm. and also not be in charge because it was an established business. I was always used to calling the shots. I've had employees before. So to t have permission to say, you know what, it's okay that I don't have to be like the person that makes all the decisions. Mm -hmm. And I had to say that as much as I wish it was a speed bump initially, it's like we didn't even get the car out of park <laughs> uh, <laughs> properly. You know, I, I could say like, oh, things are perfect and wonderful. But, but really in, in reality was, you know, when you're self-employed your entire adult life, and that was me, my entire life, uh, running, you know, doing entrepreneurial businesses from since I was younger, and Melissa coming in where mm -hmm. she's had some of that, um, but she mainly was – kind of had that employee mindset mentality and everything and that security and she wasn't used to like how entrepreneurship, you know, kind of has Riding it. Riding the flow. wave, riding yeah. the wave was really scary for me. Um, <laughs> But the, the cool thing is that um, we actually have previous relationships before where we worked with, with previous relationships and I knew and I know you knew yep. what we didn't, what didn't work for <laughs> <Yeah>. us. So, <laughs> so, you know, coming into it, it was one of those things where we really actually, it, it strengthened our relationship because we really got a sense of like, okay, this is what you're really good at. This is what I'm really good at. And then just learning to like really, truly trust the other person right. that they're going to, um, they're going to get the job done. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges is just, again, like you were saying, letting go and having that trust. And, and it's not always perfect, but I mean, I, I would say now we, we've definitely, now we're, we're really riding over those speed bumps. It was my fault. It was my fault. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it's it. good job. It. It's on public record. That it, you know what it was is that I just wanted her to be able to reach in my head and know what I was thinking. And that's where the frustration was. It's kind of like, no, I, like, let me just take that back real quick. I can't read it. your mind. I'm sorry. It's not on my resume. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and Paul, like, so you guys mentioned you each had like, you know, obviously your own business backgrounds and whatever before. So I know you ran into some big challenges and, you know, quote unquote failures, you know, prior to you guys getting into business together. And then as you mentioned, when you bring somebody else into your business, it's always a challenge to let go of some of the reins. How were you able to work through that, especially when you've had some of those, you know, challenges in the past business-wise? Yeah, I tell you what, um, those that know my story, like I uh, went right out of high school, right into the real estate world, did very well as an agent. Then I became an, an owner of a small office of 16 agents over a period of almost three and a half, four years, grew with the eight offices, over 200 agents, doing almost a half billion transactions a year, making over $8 million in gross commissions a year. That was great going from like being a busboy when I graduated high school <laughs> to, you know, within a 10 year period, like being a multimillionaire. And then I allowed family to get involved. So that's really big on a trust. Um, and they, they controlled my books and I was an absentee owner when I was training. So it did go full cycle. So it's something that I, you know, over 10 years ago, I financially, that, that, downward turn in the real estate world to 2008. I hit it just before everybody else did because I had family members that stole 
um, multi six figures out of the business over a period of years. Um, and it, it crashed my company really hard. Like we just went under in 2008 uh, very aggressively. So I had major trust issues for several years. And in my head even, I, I sabotaged my own success reinventing myself as a photographer because I only went to grow so big so that I didn't have to be responsible for other people. Mm -hmm. And then, so when Melissa came into my life, you know, I realized like, oh, my workaholism was still there. Like I'm working seven days a week, 24 hours a day to, to fill voids. And then when she it wasn't going to be healthy to have a, a mature relationship. So when she came in, she introduced me to boundaries. <laughs> and and uh, also that also came along with me trusting again, mm -hmm. which was, which was, which was a challenge. And, uh, but it's just something that, if you, if you go every day where you don't trust anybody, it's a very lonely world. Yeah. So it's just something, and, and you don't find happiness in that space. So, you know, I'm, I'm very glad that we're on the other side of that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I actually can relate a lot to that because when Tom and I met in college, he had some trust issues as well. And I just remember I was probably the most persistent person oh, ever. Yeah. And I, I just wouldn't let him get away with not talking to me. You know, like we would have a disagreement and he would want to like go off and hide and like not talk about things. And I'd be like, no, 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 but we're going to, we're going to have this conversation. We're going to talk because I was very much so the, I wanted everyone to be okay and I wanted us to be okay and I know like some of that has definitely trickled over into the business as well because you know we'll have meetings and and the meetings wouldn't go well and I'm the emotional person so I'm usually the one that oh, yeah. ends up crying <laughs> but then it's like no no we still have to like we still have to talk it out just because we had to break for that moment of I had to go and tap some emotional processing time. Like that doesn't mean things are over. We still need to come back and, and talk about this. Um, so I love that you are so open about that because I, I'm sure that that happens to a lot of people out there and a lot of entrepreneurs because you have some different perspectives on life and you have different things that have happened to you. And over time you start to lose trust in other people if they can't live up to kind of the expectations that you have. So Melissa, what was that like for you coming into the relationship in the business and dealing with some of those trust issues? It was a lot. I mean, it really was a lot at the beginning. Um, now I look back and it's like, you know, it, that was just kind of like a blip on, on the screen. But, you know, um, like, like Paul was saying, there'd be times where he would get frustrated and I would get frustrated back because our communication just, we weren't talking the same language. We were on the same page. He had certain ways that he did things and I had ways that I thought would be more efficient and better and systems. Um, I'm more of the system person in, in, in the business. So, um, but I think for us, the biggest thing was just communication. And when we talk about boundaries too, um, you know, when you have a spouse or, you know, partner that you're working with in the, you know, working with in a relationship with, it's really important. I think what we found is having those boundaries as to what's work time, what's personal time. And even though like they do meld together, at some point you kind of have to separate it out and like you were saying you know not taking things personally like this is about the business I had that challenge um, a lot I still have that challenge sometimes where I take things oh is he talking about me is that did I do something wrong is this my fault like no it's it's not you it's it's whatever's going on so really learning kind of how to get that little bit of a tougher skin business skin on and you know when you're you're in the business you're wearing the business hat when you're outside the business you're in that personal realm but then also be able to talk about it just you know as a couple hey you know when and, and when you're not in the moment, I think that's the biggest thing that we've learned. Mm -hmm. Like when we've had challenges and you're in the moment and you're frustrated, like it's sometimes it's just like verbal vomit all over the place. <laughs> but <laughs> if you can step outside and say, hey, you know, we had this conversation about this, you know, I had a really hard time, you know, with the way you communicated that to me. Can we, well, what can we do to make this better next time? That, mm -hmm. that time. And sometimes it's it's really great, and other times, you know, we we're like any other couple. We we still work through it. <laughs> they, they need a men are from Mars, women are from Venus for business. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know if it's out there or not, but <laughs> that's basically. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so I'm curious. You talk about boundaries and the importance of that, and I think especially because you guys work together, um, you know, we do the same thing. Like obviously, we show up at conferences together, all of that. So, so how do you guys set boundaries when? you have so much going on together. Yeah. Like, cause I know for us, like it, it all kind of bleeds and blends over and we've gotten to, a, I think a pretty good point where we kind of figured out how to integrate the two. Um, but it's always an ongoing challenge. And it's probably one of the biggest things that people come to us with is like, you know, how do you achieve that? Like work-life balance. 
Yeah, no, that's really great. And and we love what we do so much that we could talk about it like in our sleep and we often do. <laughs> and we have to catch ourselves. So, so random side story. The other night, it was like 2.30 in the morning. I heard Ariana talking. <laughs> and so I'm like half asleep and, and I'm like, I just started listening and she's talking something about the podcast and whatever else. And I'm like, this is kind of random. It's like middle of the night. And so I listen and then she stops and then she starts talking about it again. And I'm like, Hey, Ariana, like, Hey babe, are you, are you there? And I didn't hear anything back. And I realized she was sleeping and she was like apparently strategizing about the podcast. That's awesome. No, I think, you know, we get so passionate about things that we could talk about 24 seven, but I mean, we have certain little code things that we do where, you know, if we're in that moment where we're really in, in business and I'm like, okay, we need to kind of step out. I just look at Paul. I'm like, Hey husband. I'm like, Hey wife. Hey wife. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets a chuckle like that. Yeah. And then we kind of come back and kind of break that cycle. Um, you know, and, and, pull ourselves out of it because you can get sucked into it forever. I mean, that's the reason we all become entrepreneurs is because we, we have a passion. We have a drive. We we're, we're not like normal people. <laughs> you know, we work a bazillion hours more than the normal person. Um, and we love it. Um, but sometimes we have to have those little verbal cues to kind of pull ourselves out of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah introduced me to the thought of boundaries, um, when we first met and, and that was even like, um, like we schedule in personal time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. personal time and personal travel never happens. Cause it'll always be business. It'll always be person, you know, business travel or business um, conversations. So we, we learn to like purposely in the calendar say like, this is our time or this is her time. This mm -hmm. is my time. You know, so we, even though we're blended, you know, she, like she goes to yoga on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. That's like her space, her time. Um, and like we, we just do things independently as well. So I think it's important that you don't lose your personal identity mm -hmm. while you're both together mm -hmm. and it's okay. Like it's, don't be threatened by that. Cause I think a lot of people are threatened that if you break off of any piece that like something must be wrong. Um, and that way she feels fulfilled with what she wants. Like she keeps telling me, I'm going to go to yoga. And I'm like, no, I'm not. We'll chat after we'll conspire on how to get them there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I, I love that too, because people often like we have legit like 15 different calendars and we each have a calendar for us. We have one for each of the kids. We have one for us time. We have one for family time. We have one for each business. And oftentimes people will look at us like you guys are legit crazy. Mm -hmm. But what we found is that with so much stuff going on and all these competing priorities that for us to be able to say, all right, what are you doing for yourself this week? Like Ariana does choir, mm -hmm. right? So she's got that blocked off in calendar. Um, the more that we put those things on there, what we at least made sure of was that we got those important things down. So now if the business fills the rest of the space, we're okay because we put the important things first. But before we started doing that, the business would just expand and then we never got any of the personal yeah. time. Yeah, well, and I think using the calendar in that way also allows us to see how much of our time we're using mm -hmm. and to say, when is it time to start saying no to things, sure. which is a really hard concept to sometimes to, to take in when you're like, Oh, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm always everywhere. I do all the things and I'm always at so-and-so's birthdays and I'm always at the baby showers and I'm always at the business conferences. And like, it's really easy to use up all of our time because we think we need to be at those places. But when we use the calendar, a lot of times we'll look and say, holy crap, like this whole month is, is full. We've got something happening. So where can we say no to something so that we get some time to just be, you know, like our favorite thing this summer was we did our Friday family field trips on Fridays, yep. which was awesome, but we didn't schedule like anything on any of the weekends. We were oddly yeah, free awesome. pretty much every weekend this summer. And it was amazing. We could <laughs> it's do so whatever. empowering to say no. It's so empowering to just say, you know, and we've, when we've been saying no to a lot more things more often now because yeah. it was just like you. I mean, we were just saying yes to everything and although no regrets and it's led to some amazing opportunities, you know, meeting you guys and everything else. But um, you know, at some point you just have to like, you know, pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. 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 And I think the other thing too, is you were talking about the having the personal stuff, like having your own thing. And we just talked to a, a couple earlier. It was like, when you're together 24 seven and you work together and, and you're married and you live together, like it's, it's a lot. Most marriages, you know, if people have traditional nine to fives, you're at work all day. And then you only get to see your family and your spouse for a couple hours in the morning, a couple hours at night, maybe on the weekend. 
you're not together all the time. When you're together all the time, it throws a lot of little complexities and shifts in there that you wouldn't expect. So having that personal time is even more essential. And I found for us just being able to say like, hey, I'm just going to go to lunch with my girlfriends or we're just, I'm going to take a night and go shopping if I want to. Like having that time to kind of do your own thing and having the other person understand that that's, that that is okay. And that maybe your time doesn't always look like their time. Cause I totally will binge watch Netflix any day. <laughs> um, Guilty. but you know, it's like, it's okay that cause that's their time to do whatever they want with it. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. It just matters that they are getting, space to be themselves and you know then you can as a spouse go take some space to be yourself yeah. or we switch off being parents one of those things <laughs> and we we also do the same thing um on a personal level like together so one of the things i learned a long time ago we actually took two things i learned through through my life and combined them together as a couple it because as entrepreneurs like the it never stops right like it's 24 7 like we will allow ourselves to go into all that time that right around the six to eight week mark, you know, normally is when all of us are kind of like on that burnout mode or that mm -hmm. frying mode. And I learned that a long time ago from a friend of mine. And so what we do is we purposely do, we, we do something called jar trips. So what we have is these little slips of paper where we wrote down these random, the most random places, <laughs> like things that we would never really do, yeah. but these most random places uh, that are within like a three, four mile or three, four hour drive. Mm -hmm. So this is, and what we do is we do a three day weekend every six to eight weeks and that's where we totally turn off we totally shut everything down um, but it's always random and we plan nothing so what we'll do is when we come back from a previous jar trip we go the first thing we do when we walk in the house we pull out one of the slips of paper and that tells us where we're going and all we do is book an airbnb to that location we make no plans at all and we go there and we discover like what that little town or that little area or whatever it is. And we have had some of, some of the craziest, fun, weirdest experiences. Because <laughs> we'll just go into the small town like, you know, and it's like, wow, like they have a holiday parade going on. You so know? The parade. And, you know, it's like, okay. And then we went to one that was like the worst festival. The worst festival. Like, it was Brockworst. Brockworst? And stuff. It was like, oh, it was so random, right? It was just so God. random. Stuff we would never done. So we're sitting there listening to polka music for the afternoon. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like really cool and interesting and weird. But it just it keeps things interesting. And again, that, that six to eight week mark, it's just enough time to refresh, to refocus and come back and you just feel on fire, mm -hmm. you know, that, that Monday when you walk back in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that concept. I mean, you know, especially because, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're often like so structured and so on the go that to just literally do the complete opposite. And it's, it's kind of similar, like our Friday family field trips, we said, I love that. Yeah. you know, instead of like doing these big vacations, like once a year, twice a year, what if we just made a list of all these random places within three to four hour drive? And, you know, we've got a giant list. We're going to keep, we keep adding to yep. it. We keep finding new things to add. But, uh, you know, I, I just love that concept of getting away. And like what I'm hearing from there, it's just kind of being present and enjoying mm -hmm. because one of the things I see with us all the time is that, you know, we're always going after something else. Like we're growing the business. We're trying to impact more people, but to take that time and just truly enjoy things and sometimes not even have a structure and know what happens. But that's oftentimes where you get like this enjoyment or you reconnect or you let those other things go. So like, I love that idea. We're totally stealing that by the way. Yes. <laughs> But I think part of it too is, you know, the, the constant scheduling of lives and raising our kids now makes me really think about how much we want to schedule them from a young age. Um, so one of the rules that we've kind of put in place is that they aren't allowed to be in one, more than one activity at a time because they're only six and three years old. So she gets to choose. She does two different things, but she has to pick which one she's doing when. Yeah. Is that soccer or is that gymnastics? And now that our son is three, we're putting him into soccer for the first time, but it will be one child can pick one activity at a time until they get to the point where they're older and they can do more. <coughs> Excuse me. Ariana has bronchitis, by the way, totally so she's dying. Trying not to be dying live on, on the air. <laughs> <laughs> this is, again, entrepreneurship. we got to work through it. Right? <laughs> really, right? Well, well like, like, so for us, um, this is going to be completely random, but, you know, I think it's going to spark some good conversation. We actually, every year since we've had kids, we get to like the end of the year and we just get sick. Like our whole house will get sick and all that planning and stuff that we do, we've now figured out that like Q4, we've got to cut a lot back. Big. But yeah. so as we get into this year, like um, our whole theme for this entire year was to put us first. 
-hmm. And that was individually with our health, with our mind, with personal development, um, with our relationship and growing that. And then even with our kids. And that's where a lot of this, like the Friday family field trip and all of that came from was because we said, you know, we've spent the last several years like becoming parents and growing these businesses, but we had kind of lost a little bit of like why we were doing things and taking care of ourselves. So it's been such a, you know, a, a great thing this year to be able to take care of ourselves. And I think we have shown up better in every other aspect of our life because we took some of that time away just for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important that time away, it brings you back to the why because, you know, we are crazy, people, like, you know, but why are we doing this all to begin with? And, you know, it's unfortunate that like something really major has to happen to shake us up a little bit. Why not just every day appreciate, you know, what what we're doing and, and take that time away and, you know, putting the extra hours and putting the extra time in um, and really coming back to that why. So. And um, one of the things I introduced to Melissa a couple of years ago, because oh, yeah. we, we pivoted our business a couple of times, is I had a simple, cause especially in this internet marketing world, like I, I, I made the millions and it all sounds good and it's a great hero story, blah, 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 right? <laughs> and everybody and everybody's into all that. Blah, blah, blah. It, blah, but, blah, blah. <laughs> but it's just something like I was miserable. I was depressed. You know, mm -hmm. like I had a lot of stress, had a lot of people that I was responsible for. And then when everything went to crap, you know, a lot of those friendships that you thought you had and everything like just totally dried up, disappeared and everything. Right. But I come back and it's like, even when we are chasing, we are doing what we're doing right now. And you see a lot of shiny objects and a lot of carrots out there of got to have it all, all the acquisition of more and more and more. Right. Mm -hmm. so why we I just told her, I was like, how much is enough? Like, seriously, like how much is enough? And once we answered that question, we actually got out of the big house last year. Mm -hmm. We actually got rid of a lot of things and we start focusing back on our why. Like we love to travel. Yeah. We love to do things. We like, it's not the stuff because mm -hmm. we learned through the years, like the stuff will make you happy for the 10 minutes you got it to say, wow, isn't this cool? And then when you're in that fancy expensive car, six months later, you don't even look at it anymore. You look mm -hmm. at it from point A to point A, B. That's all it is. Right. And it's just an expense a lot of times when it needs repaired. <laughs> um, so just something that it just comes back to like, how much is enough when you're in the pursuit of this with the entrepreneurship? Have you given yourself permission to say, you know what? It, Cause if it's constantly more and more and more, you're never going to be content ever. ever. I learned that the hard way mm -hmm. And for us, it's experiences, it's family, it's quality time, allowing the business to actually serve us. And that's so, so key. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, that was just my little rant. <laughs> well, I, was just saying, I, I, I wish I could Those pull like a hundred likes on that. Well, that, no, cause that's the thing too. And, you know, I, I think we've been, um, you know, blessed to like figure a lot of the stuff out early. And a lot of it, like for me at least was talking to people that had, had been there, right. They had, they were, you know, 40 years older than myself and just listening to what they say. And that theme I've heard time and time again. And you know, what the, one of the best things we did was continued focusing on getting aligned on why we wanted to do this. And that's really been the thing for us. It was like, well, first it's us, our family, our freedom, all of that. But then beyond that, once we kind of knew like what was important and the, the categories we always use are, you know, what things do you want? And most people start with those. And then you kind of, I think, mature to like experiences. It's like, well, there's also experiences. And then there's relationships. Like what kind of people do you want to have in your life? And then ultimately there's like this impact, like beyond you, how do you make that? And yeah. what we've seen is that the more that we've talked about that and continue realigning on that, the easier it's made all the other decisions. Sure. So like prior to that, it was like, well, we could do everything. And Ariana's <laughs> like, no, we don't have to. And I'm like, yeah, we could do all this stuff. But now that we're aligned on what's truly important, I mean, something comes up and the first question we ask is, does this get us to where we want to be? And if the answer is no, going back to your point earlier, we say no and we're better with that. Exactly. I've, I've always said to you, just because we can doesn't mean we have to. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And so talk to me about how, how being a parent fits in with all of this too, because that's the thing that always throws us off is like, okay, we've got the businesses. Now we're taking care of the relationship. And then it's like all kids just throw wrenches in things often and how do you guys deal with being parents on top of all of this? Maybe that's why you couldn't get the car out of park. They threw a wrench in. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say we, we have a very unique um, scenario yeah, where we're, we're not, really yeah, we're, we're not full-time parents where I, you know, uh, David uh, is almost 13 now and Melissa is David's bonus mom. Bonus mom. And, <laughs> I love that. Something, <laughs> and it's something that we have a really great relationship 
with David's mom and um, uh, her husband as well, uh, to the point that they actually were guests at our wedding mm -hmm. last year. Oh, and so great. just something that we're, we're very blessed. But we do, in a way, we're kind of toggling between two different lifestyles. So it, it kind of can throw a wrench in for, with people that maybe are in a, a blended family mm -hmm. that don't have as cooperative uh, setups as, as we do, but it's still a little bit negotiating when it's like, oh, there's a conference coming up and uh, we like to attend it, but it's on the wrong weekend or there's something else going on. It, it's like a give, an ebb and flow and a give and a take, mm -hmm. um, but it's just something that um, it definitely plays in because for me, my life changed when, when David was born was that now I'm not making decisions just for myself. I'm making decisions that will impact a third party, will impact mm -hmm. another human being. And I think people don't really, will never get that until they actually have, they're in that position mm -hmm. to realize that it's, it's, it's one thing like, oh, we're adults, we'll recover, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, when you have a child and you're supporting and, and, and it's something that you want to lead by example. Like there's so many el other elements that I think come in that you just never think about before having a child. Yeah. And the cool thing of David gets is he gets to see all his parents doing all different things and all the opportunities. Yeah. You know, he's got entrepreneurs in his family um, mm -hmm. on all sides. And so he can really see that he has so many options and is unlimited. And, you know, it's it's the things that we do and the efforts that we put into our business. Um, he might not always say anything, but, you know, he's always watching. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And he's, and he's asking questions. And he's getting to that point now where he's starting to ask more questions about, you know, mm -hmm. what it is exactly that we do. And um, and that's the cool thing is that, you know, it, it kind of, you know, gives him opportunity to, to grow and opportunity to see the world through this really big lens. You know, and what I love about that, too, um, we've had some shifts in our businesses, as you guys have. Yeah. And one of the shifts we made last year was really mm -hmm. focusing more on families and people with families. And um, I remember we had a lot of discussions because we were coming up with like our manifesto and we're like, how do we define this? And one of the things that we were, that people gave us feedback on was, you know, well, we don't have a family or they, they look at it in the traditional way. Mm -hmm. And it was something that was very important to us was like, you know, family is however you define it. And, you know, we've worked with a lot of people that have had different types of families. I mean, we have a very different type of family, but I, I love the fact that you guys were able to obviously take your different backgrounds, your, your ups and downs and pull it together and mold it into the life that works for you and your family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just see so many people listening to this, realizing that like, Hey, even though we're different, that's okay. And we can still make the most out of whatever we want our lives to look like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's where we take it from. Um, Melissa says a lot, but uh, you know, there's the whole like hustle and grind movement and we're more about grace and ease. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh, so we that. want things to serve us. Yeah. So yes, there is the hustle element, but when you're only focused on that, then you're not going back and saying, why, why am I doing this? What is it really serving? It should be a means to an end, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and I, I just remember, I'm not sure if it was Stephen Covey or another book many, many years ago, but it, I, I remind people, even that we coach uh, ourselves all the time. It's like, you know, if you're on your deathbed, the last thing you're going to say to somebody is I wish I worked an extra day. Mm -hmm. It's the last thing you would ever <laughs> say. So it's like, what are the regrets? Well, turn it around and make all those things happen. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. This guy loves Cubby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, exactly to that point, like oftentimes what happens is that as entrepreneurs, we have to overcome some crazy things, right? Like, you know, proving out an idea, making all those pivots, people not believing in us. And I think we get into this mode where we just push, push and we overcome like obstacles. Yeah. But that's such an important point because we have seen the same thing like this hustle movement where it's like it's all about the hustle and it's like, well, no, listen, there's points where we've got to hustle. But if you don't know where that's going to or where that's going to end, that can very easily take over your life and consume you, you know, so it, like I, I love that, you know it's, it's the grace and the ease, you mm -hmm. know, and like, I could just see that being something to continuously remind ourselves is to say, like, what is the end or what are the things we can do now to bring more of that back into our lives? Absolutely. I love that word pivot. Cause I, again, <laughs> I, you've used it a few times too, but we're idea, you know, we, we, we go after things and you know, the whole idea of fail fast, like we go after things and then within six months or a year, we could have put time, mm -hmm. energy, money into something. Uh, but it's like, you know, sometimes we have to cut bait. Sometimes, yep. you know, 
Uh, yeah. We have to take a step back and go, you know what, this isn't serving us. This isn't really where our vision is or our values have changed or life mm -hmm. has changed and we have to go a different direction. But we're willing well, to take those risks. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, and a great example of that, um, we had talked like earlier in the year and you guys were going to bring me on and we we're going to do this whole thing together. Yes. And then, yeah. Melissa, I remember you reached out afterwards and you're like, you know, we just went to this conference. We just had this epiphany and we're going to make a pivot. So we're not going to need you anymore. And I can't remember if I told Ariana or if I was just thinking of it afterwards. I was like, that is so awesome. So obviously it wasn't awesome that we weren't going to work together. <laughs> but the fact that you guys went to that conference, you had the discussion, you had clarity, mm -hmm. and then you were able to say, this is the direction that we want to go. And you went after it. And like, I just appreciated that so much. Like, even though obviously we weren't going to work together, there's not other ways, but, but, you know, ways. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, I think there's so many people that are afraid to do those things. And that's why like the same thing with us, it's always like, you know, are, are we going to regret this if we don't go after it? And we've made so many mistakes, you know, along the way, but I wouldn't take any of them back because they're all the pieces that got us to where we are now. Exactly. Yeah. We, we want to hold on to things so too. bad. Yeah. <laughs> I, always, I used to always say, I'll, I'll know if the decision I'm making today is right five years from now. <laughs> 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 oh, I love that so much. So out of everything that we've kind of talked about today, what stands out to, to you guys as something you want listeners to take away from your story, from the conversation, from all the things that we've kind of chatted on? I think the biggest thing um, is about the boundaries um, because in order, if, especially if you're working together and you're in the grind and you're the every day is being able to set those boundaries um, both like in the business itself, as far as like, you know, what you're willing to do when, and um, you know, when you're willing to have those business hours and then also boundaries with as, as a couple, you know, um, being able to separate that personal time, that, that professional time, being to have those conversations when you're not in the heat of the moment and have that good communication um, and just realize that it's you know it's ebb and flow and it's always working it's 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 not going to be perfect um and that's okay um but when when you do that and you work together you really build something that's just really beautiful as a couple you're building something together you're working towards that common goal and and that's why that's why we're doing all this oh, to yeah. begin with <laughs> and i'm not yeah. going to add anything because then you also need to know when to say nothing <laughs> i love it i love it i think that might be one of the best takeaway responses yet <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. So where is the best place for people to reach out and find you if they want to connect? Absolutely. So um, our website is paulpruitt.com, and that's where you can find all about our personal branding and professional branding. And then you can find us on Facebook at Paul and Melissa Pruitt. Awesome. Awesome. All right. It's been another great episode with Tom and Ariana, your hosts and lifestyle builders. And we want to extend a huge thank you to you, Paul Melissa, for coming on and sharing the laughs and holding on while I was dying in the background. <laughs> thank you guys for coming on the show today. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, I was amazed how choked up you were about what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what it was. That is exactly what made me start coughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And so for everyone listening, I want you guys to remember, as always, it's your life, your business, your way. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you know another entrepreneur who may benefit from hearing this show, we would so appreciate you being a good friend and sharing it with them. And just a reminder, as a special offer during this super special Couples and Entrepreneurship Month, we'd like to invite you to get started with your first month of Lifestyle Builders for only $1. Sign up now at tomanariana.com slash lbcouples with the promo code lbcouples. Are you a Lifestyle Builders podcast fan? We'd love to hear from you. Head on over to tomanariana.com slash iTunes and leave us a review.